Hello everybody and welcome. This is Kelly of the Forgotten South and today we're at an incredibly important and very historic building in North Florida. I've been documenting this building for about seven years now. Um, it looks to be in pretty bad shape, but I'll tell you, it's pretty much looked this way the whole time that I've been coming to see it. So um, I'm gonna give you as much information as I can about this one, but just to let you know, I'm being intentionally vague about some of its history because this property is um, incredibly endangered. I'm not gonna be giving out its location specifics at this time. The property owner has given me permission to be here. He's become a friend of mine over the years, but um, no one else is allowed on the property and I've decided to respect his privacy and also to try to protect the integrity of this building because um, before he bought it and put up no trespassing signs, it was getting vandalized and broken into and most of its parts have been stolen. So anyway, let's go ahead with this. This house looks like a shell of something, but what we're actually looking at here is the front of the home. So that right there would have been a front door um, with a staircase on either side coming up. So this bottom floor here doesn't look as tall as it is. It's about six feet tall on the bottom floor, and I'll show you more of that in just a minute. But this family was actually a family from South Carolina. So they were building this in a very similar style as what they might have seen back home in South Carolina. Now, if you notice the lines there and there, that's where a porch roof used to be. And after I'm done with this video, I'd be happy to post, I have a sketch of what this building would have looked like with its facade completely intact still. And the back of this home would have been quite a big, um, quite a big footprint that housed many people. So like I mentioned, this family was a prominent cotton plant fam planting family from South Carolina, and they moved here to North Florida um, in, we've got a couple different accounts, but I believe it to be about 1840s, late 1830s, which would have been pretty early here for Florida to have any European settlers. They came here with, um, in, one, uh, in one census, I've seen 40 enslaved people, and in another one, I've seen 80, but they came here with a, a sizable family as well as a, a group of enslaved people that were likely very much so responsible for building this place. So when they got to this part of Florida, they planted cotton. Um, there's a legend here that during the war, some of the enslaved persons here had escaped and were actually caught by uh, Confederate troops and brought back to this plantation. I haven't been able to um, confirm that yet, but I'll be happy to, um, I'm gonna of course dig and find out what I can find about it see if I can confirm that story. So I'm gonna walk around the back. This property is pretty overgrown right now. You can see it's just bushes and overgrowth. And no matter when you're watching this, I'm here in December in Florida and it's almost 80 degrees. So it's almost always this green out here. If you come out here in the spring or the summer though, it's almost intolerable because the bugs are so bad. So now what we're looking at here is the rear of the home. And you'll notice that there's a couple different doorways. There's the one here that would have led to a wing off the second floor. And then this landing here has stairs up to the second floor. And I'm gonna get closer to show you guys that in just a minute. Okay, so we'll go up this way. There's a lot of great details left, even though a lot of the home has been um, stripped down. You'll see uh, the details in the, in the eaves up there. It's just beautiful woodwork that must have been pretty impressive to pull off back then. And I've been paying very close attention to bricks lately because bricks can tell you a lot. So I want to just take a minute to show these with you guys. When I'm done with the video, I'm gonna be doing a closer survey, taking pictures of bricks and looking for markings to see if we can find anything out about dating them and when they were made, and also perhaps any names of um, anyone who might've made them. Sometimes they'll leave a mark, a letter or a fingerprint or something like that. So as you saw from way back, this bottom floor looks to be pretty short, right? And this building is definitely not secure. So I'm gonna go in as far as I can and then I'll tell you guys when. We're just gonna have to leave it there because I'm not gonna take my own life into my hands, right? <laughs> so we're here in the first floor. Um, I've seen a couple, There's a, there's been two surveys, official surveys done on this house. One that said that this might've been where like grain or you know hay or food storage might've been down here. Um, it looks like the walls were never um, done in to make, to be too fancy, but uh, like stuccoed and that kind of thing. But if we look really closely, you'll see all kinds of interesting details in the bricks. And then also I just noticed today on this visit that these door jams are painted yellow. 
So that might kind of give us a little bit of an insight into what this looked like back then. So we'll walk through here. As you'll notice, there's brick here on the ground um, and the beginning of a wall. So there would have been a wall right here. So this could have been, um, there's speculation, of course, that this might have been quarters where uh, enslaved persons who worked in the house might have lived. Um, I can't confirm or deny that, but I'm working with a couple other um, architectural historians to try and figure that out. So please stay tuned. Now, I'm about, um, I'm 5'10", and if you'll see me, you know, these beams are about to hit my head. So <laughs> it's pretty short in here. One of the other rooms, and this, um, the ceiling, or the floor joists for the second floor are pretty compromised here, so I'm gonna be careful, but you'll see that they're sagging pretty badly in this room. As always, if you guys have any questions as I walk through this house, if you wanna know anything, if you want me to um, go over it later or share pictures that, that explain something better, please let me know. Um, like I mentioned, at this time, I won't be mentioning the name of the family who built this or any specifics because I'm trying to make sure we're being respectful of it. Um, but in the future, I really hope to be able to have completed a full survey of this in collaboration with a few other historians. Uh, to get it out to you and to be able to share that full story. But until we've secured this building better, I just don't think that would be the most responsible thing to do right now. So we're gonna look at these boards and if you see the size of my hand, like this, it's a pretty wide board right there. I love paying attention to the nails. Where you can see that there used to be something covering this that's now gone. Over here we have more brick. And this brick seems to be aging quite a bit differently than the other brick in the house. So um, uh, I'm gonna ask when I speak to someone, if you look at this over here, for instance, see how this brick is starting to deteriorate? It's almost like just falling into sand. So I'm curious if that was just made with something different or maybe because of its increased exposure, why that has aged so differently than the brick on this um, elevation of the home. But now what we're doing, <laughs> is about as far as I can go. So I wanna show you guys, I'm standing on a stone stepping, uh, or stone stairs right now. I just came out of that door where we were downstairs. And now we're looking at the platform up to the second level. So this is the second floor and this definitely would have been the living quarters. Um, it's nicer up here. The walls and the windows are huge. They're almost floor to ceiling in all the rooms if you can see, not quite floor to ceiling, but that's a big window. And then this would have been that main door entrance. So this landing would have likely been where all guests came through. They weren't gonna come through the bottom floor where it was a little bit more rustic. So this would have been the landing where they would have greeted guests, where the family would have come out to look over their property. And I always thought this was cool. That's remnants of the wallpaper are still here. Because when you look around this, besides all the architectural details, there's not a lot left. There aren't curtains or furniture or pictures or books or clothes or anything really left here. But this wallpaper I thought gave a nice little insight into how proud these people must have been of their home, um, that obviously they were wealthy, um, but also maybe just a quick glimpse into what this might have looked like when, when they were all living here. So I'm here on this landing, and if you wanna see what this looks like, all of the steps are missing. And here I am standing on this last step. So these boards were not here the last time I was here. People picked these up off the property and have used them to get up, but they're way too um, compromised. I'm not gonna crawl up on those. So a few years ago, I was still able to get up here pretty safely. And because I don't have a ladder with me at the time, I'm not gonna be going up here right now, but I will be able to share pictures with you so you can kind of see what those interior rooms look like a little bit better. Um, you can probably get a pretty good idea from this point where I'm at right now. But I'm gonna walk down and see if I can show you through So this wall, see, all the panels are almost gone. This thing is completely exposed. So this would have been one of the main bedrooms, we believe. As you can see in there. And then we're back over here is where the door that would have led out to the second, to this back wing that would have come all the way back here over this property. 
So the proper survey that would be done would hopefully be able to outline for us the footprint of where it exactly was laid out, um, how, many, how many rooms were in it, and then also if there was any other dependency buildings back here, like log barns, tobacco barns, the kitchen, that kind of thing that was usually separated from the house. And now see here we have that yellow paint again. Pretty cool. So I thank you all for being here with me today. I know these tours are a little jumbly because you're seeing it live with me. I think it's a pretty cool space and I'm really glad you were able to join me. So if you have any questions about this one, please let me know and also stay tuned so that I could tell you the full story later um, and maybe be able to provide some additional in context after I meet again with the owner and some other local historians. But at this point, we actually believe that this might be the oldest home still standing in the county that I'm in. So I can't wait to tell you more about that later. Thank y'all for being here.